got something I've been wanting to share with you guys for a minute. This is a Deutsch connector. It's an electrical connector, and it's actually made by a company called JR Ready out of China. Uh, Deutsch, I believe, is an actual brand of German-made connector, and JR Ready is kind of a knockoff of that, a very affordable knockoff, and frankly, a pretty high-quality knockoff. These are the little style of connectors that I'm using in building my car. And just about everywhere you look on my car, you are going to find these little connectors. If you have a look at, uh, there's one right there that operates the, uh, the electric door locks. There's a Deutsch connector. If you come around to the back end of my car, I've got a, uh, an electric trunk popper right here. My electric uh, locks are from uh, Classic Keyless. And if you look on the car right here, there's a, uh, there we go, there's a little Deutsch connector right there. If we look down inside the trunk of my car, there's another Deutsch connector right there for my uh, my tail lights. So all over this car, I am using these little high-end electrical connectors because they are way better than the cheap AutoZone crap, and I'm about to show you why. All right, so let's first talk about the type of connectors that are no good. This is your cheap AutoZone garbage. Comes a pack of like a hundred for like seven ninety nine, and these things basically have three serious problems with them. Uh, the first of which is the things are not uh, they're not waterproof at all. So I'm just going to do a little demonstration for you here. Uh, let me uh, pull a couple of lines back and expose some copper. Uh, these things, they're not waterproof. They have no seals of any type that keeps the water out. Most people are crimping these things with a set of pliers like that, which is the second issue. It produces just an absolute uh, garbage crimp. And then the third problem is that these things, uh, they're not, um, <clears throat> they don't lock together at all. So I'm going to take these pliers here. I'm going to insert my 16-gauge uh, piece of wire here. Let me just roll that wire up for you we'll insert that into one of the one of the mail ends crimp it real good and when i'm using one of these pliers i also use one of those and kind of you know put that tooth mark in it if you will so let's go ahead and do another one here and i'm telling you this type of pliers these things are just or pliers excuse me crimpers they're really just no good so i'll go ahead and Crimp that real good. I'll put it in there in the little tooth mark. Okay, so here we are. I've connected these two, uh, the wires to it. I'm ready to go ahead and connect them together. There we go. <clears throat> so here we basically have a connection. Uh, it's not waterproof. And from what I've found over time, these things come apart. They don't lock together. There's absolutely nothing stopping me from just accidentally pulling the two things apart. If you want to make sure that you are broke down on the side of the road, wire up your whole car with those right there. It's the fast track to breaking down. Enter the JR Ready Deutsch connectors. This little kit right here I got on Amazon. I'll put a link down below in the description to it. I'm not sponsored in any way, uh, but this kit was about 200 bucks delivered to my door. This stuff is expensive. You can literally buy one of those connectors right there for what that entire box of connectors costs, and for good reason. So first, let's talk about what makes those little connectors so good, and we'll start by talking about the crimpers. This is the crimpers that came with my kit. Uh, you notice just an immediate difference between these two. Uh, these crimpers here will do between 12 and 22 gauge wire, and all you do is sit there and just rotate on that little knob right there in order to set the, uh, the crimpers up to crimp what you want. You've also got different size uh, little stops, I would call these things, that, that basically thread into the pliers right here, and they determine how far your little electrical connectors are allowed to slide in and out of your crimpers so that you get it crimped at the proper location. And the way that these things work, if you have a look right up inside that hole right there, let's see if I can get this good. Uh, there we go, there we go. And see those teeth? that basically come in. Look at that. You can kind of see the teeth right there. You have four individual teeth. There we go. You see it pretty good right there. That come in and squeeze that little barrel connector onto the wire. This is where your excellent crimp comes from. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little demonstration here and assemble one of these uh, JR Ready Deutsch connectors here. Uh, so I've got myself some 16 gauge wire. I did go ahead and spin it to keep it nice and tight. I'm then going to take my little uh, female connector terminal right there. I'm gonna slide that over it. And you'll notice that I've purposefully been pretty careful about the amount of insulation that I've pulled back so that you can see that there's really there's not any exposed wire right there. It just goes straight from insulation to the terminal. And then at that point, I'm going to take this, which I've already set the little dial right there to 16 gauge. I'm going to slide this into here, just like that right there. Okay, you see like that? And then I start squeezing it. Squeeze it pretty good. Okay. And then, let's see if you can get that on camera right there. Maybe it's got four little indentions on there to hold that little female terminal onto the end of that wire. So now I've got my little male terminal right there. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to slide it over the end of the wire. Okay. I will insert it, the, the uh, little electrical connector and everything, right into the back side right there. Squeeze it pretty good. And there we have a male and a female terminal installed on the end of 16 gauge wire with a little four-sided crimp. So once I've got my little electrical uh, terminal right there on the end of my wire and I'm ready to insert it into the housing, first thing you want to do is make sure that you're using the correct housing. You don't want to use the male terminal with the female housing and so forth. That is your female housing. That is your female terminal. All you're gonna do is slide that right up into, can you see that right there? The little uh, <clears throat> the little silicone block right into the back of it, and then you'll hear it kind of click in. Right there, I heard the click, I don't know if you could hear that, but you've got this little, uh, little silicone block right there that seals off the wires so that as that wire comes into that terminal, everything is nice and watertight. I'm not gonna put the second wire in because it's really just not necessary for this demonstration. So. Once you've got that and your female terminal is right up in there like that, you're going to take your wedge. Your wedge looks like that right there. Can you see that? You slide it right into the end of it just like that. You know, and kind of work it and wiggle it around a little bit until it goes in there and snaps into place. Here we have our male housing right there. Again, the same kind of deal. You just insert it right in there. I recommend making sure when you insert this stuff into these connectors, hold it from, you know, from up close right here. Don't hold it from way back here. You can just completely jackknife that wire to the side and do damage to it. So I find I have my best success when I push it in up close to the terminal. You'll hear it kind of go in and lock in. So can you see up inside of there? There's our uh, little male terminal in there. And then at that point, you're going to take that little wedge right there and you're going to insert it right down inside of there i recommend using like uh you know some small needle nose pliers for that all right i got my needle nose pliers with my little green wedge and basically what you're going to do is you're going to insert that right up in there so that it goes and locks in place i don't think i'm ever going to be able to successfully show you up inside of there so let me put it in there and then i'll show you the finished product all right, here, I turn my flashlight on for you. I'm blinding myself. You can see that little green wedge right up inside there. It basically holds those little terminals firmly in place. So there's the two halves of my JR Ready Deutsch connector. You basically connect these things together and you'll kind of hear them. You'll feel them real nice and tight as you push them together because you've got that that uh, silicone seal right there that makes everything watertight. And then as I push it together, you'll hear it click and lock into place. So at that point, I've got a watertight, nice connection that should be very strong. Here in a few minutes, I'm gonna try this and just try and pull these apart with some weights on it and see exactly you know, how strong it really is. Haven't tried that before, so frankly, I don't really even know. One of the things that I wanna show you that's really cool is you can buy these little metal tabs here, these little mounts, and you just, you know, put a bolt to screw whatever in whatever you want to hold that in place. And you can see it's got these little, uh, you know, little tabs bent into it right there and you take your uh, your connector right there you slide it in and again you'll hear it click 
There we go. And now you can mount that thing to whatever you want and it holds your connector in place so it's not sitting there vibrating around and ultimately doing damage to the wire and to the connection. So before I do some testing on this thing to see how strong it's really held together, let me show you something cool. So if I push on that tab right there and I pull them apart, okay, let's suppose here that at this point in my job, I've set this up with this little, you know, double connector here. And let's say that I want a bigger connector. Maybe I want a, a four connector or even a great big dozen connector, right? I know that I want more wires coming into this thing than I actually want. It, it's really no big deal at all. Uh, Jay already gives you this little tool right here that comes with their kit. It's like a, you know, a flathead screwdriver on that end and then has this little, you can kind of see it right there, little hook deal on the other. And these things are really easy to take apart. So like if you wanted to, all you've got to do is just sit here and sit here and use that to kind of pop that wedge up out of there and then if I wanted to remove that connector it's gonna be really hard for you to see inside you know that dark space right there but take my word for it when you're looking with your naked eye you can easily see a little tab in there that you just kinda of push down on with the end of that little screwdriver bit right there and then you pull the wire right out of the thing it's common that the uh, the little seal the little silicone seal right there comes off on the wire which time no big deal you just plug that right back into the end of that connector to be used for another day. And then at that point, uh, you're taking that same wire and just inserting it into a different connector, in this case, a four. And of course it slides right in. There she is right there. You'd put your wedge in there just the same. It's a different wedge, but you put the wedge in there and you can sit here and very easily switch out from whatever connector you want, two, three, four singles, whatever very quickly and easily that's cool one of the things that i'm excited to do on my redline nova is for instance you know you've got all of these wires that come through the firewall uh, up inside the fenders wires for the blinkers the fans the headlights all of this stuff um, <clears throat> and i want the ability to be able to unhook all of that stuff quickly and easily and have those wires go through the firewall, you know, where there's no chance of, of anything getting damaged, you know, trying to do grommets and all of that. So this is an actual real Deutsch brand connector and it's a bulkhead mount connector. So you just put a hole right there in the firewall, that thing mounts right up into the firewall and then I'm just going to have this dozen plug with a dozen wires coming up to it that connects right there to it really really quickly and easily so i'll be able to just you know hook and unhook a lot of wires very professionally very quickly look around online there's a lot of really neat stuff that solves some interesting problems uh some problems with some interesting solutions before we go test our little double connector to see how strong it is, I want to show you something else that's kind of neat. You can get these things in different sizes. Notice how both of these are double plugs, but one is much larger than the other. That's for much bigger wire. That's for smaller wire. So they do come in different sizes. There's one other thing that's pretty neat. Suppose for a minute that, you know, you, you need a five plug connector, um, you know, or maybe a six is all you got handy or whatever. But at the end of the day, you don't need to use all of the little terminals in your plug, but you still want it to be watertight. This kit did come with these little plastic plugs that insert right into the end of this thing. There we go. Goes in just like that and make sure that it's watertight. All right, you guys know what a jack stand weighs. Got my little Deutsch connector right here clamped to a jack stand. Let's see if I can pick it up with that. Not bad. Let's get something heavier. Okay, I found a much, much larger jack stand. Let's see if I can pick this thing up with it here. Wow, it's pretty impressive. All right, let's see uh, exactly how much tension we put on this thing, trying to pull it apart there. Got it on my little scale. Looks like a big jack stand. It's about 15 pounds. After mistreating our little connector here with 15 pounds worth of tension, I'm going to go ahead and check it for continuity. If everything is still connected inside the connector here, that one will go to zero. And there we have it. 
I feel like I should add a little disclaimer to this video and say that I am not a professional automotive electrician. I'm just sharing what I've learned here in my home shop. So if you are a professional automotive electrician and there's something that I said in this video that you want to correct down below in the comments, by all means, please share the information with us. But just so you know, you don't have to be a dick about it. So that's my two cents on this. I don't recommend using these things right here because the crimp is just not reliable. I've seen that over time because I've used them for years and years. Uh, they're easy to pull apart and they're not watertight. So water will get in there and destroy your electrical connection. In my opinion, these things are just for when you're broke down on the side of the road, you're across the street from Walmart, you need to connect some wires, you're just trying to get home. Really appreciate all of my subscribers to this channel. If you found this content helpful and you want to make sure you see more, be sure to click subscribe down below. Please also click that thumbs up down below so that YouTube knows I'm not uploading just junk content. If you got questions, you want to add something to this, by all means, uh, put it down below in the comments. I very commonly answer those things. If you know something that I don't know, I'm absolutely glad to hear it. I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something. Y'all have a great afternoon. Be good.